we can then save the life, literally save the life, carry the man that was injured all the way down the mountain. And everybody deserves to know it and to thank him for it. Thank you. I love doing that. Yeah, I know. <laughs> At least this one was positive. <laughs> um, thank you. There were there were a number of us involved. I was not alone. But I didn't know who they were. Yeah, that, and that's fine. But I want the public to know. Um, it was a uh, fire department and paramedics, and they did an outstanding job. Uh, gentleman, I guess I'll tell the story since you mentioned it, broke his leg up uh, a half mile below Echo Lake on Saturday night. Uh, he couldn't have picked a better night to do it because there were 15 or 20 uh, medical students camping up at Echo Lake practicing wilderness medicine. <laughs> They were in their glory, <laughs> and they did. They they um, helped us get them so far. But um, thank you. So, thank you. With that, I'll go to uh, public be heard. Paul Kastner, two minutes. How do I follow that act? Sorry. <laughs> um, I represent the Chamber of Commerce, and I just wanted to give everybody an update on a meeting we held two weeks ago. Um, we are in the planning stages of doing something for next year. Uh, obviously, it's the 50th anniversary of the Woodstock Festival. And we have brought together, um, or bringing together, a coalition of <coughs> artists of all types, musicians, venues, to put together a program that hopefully will, will go throughout the summer. We're not promoting the festival's 50th, we are promoting the hundred plus years of Woodstock, which gave birth to the festival. I think somewhere along the line, the festival obviously gave us a great credibility as a name, but lost in all of that is this rich history of arts and culture and free thinking. So we had a very good meeting. I think we had about 50 people came. Richard was there. Um, and if this goes forward and we can get, we don't really plan to, it, it's not a chamber event per se, we're, we're just facilitating it. We'll have a steering committee, uh, but we envision that it could really be something and it does play off the year itself. And we'll get hopefully a lot of press and I think it's a very good undertaking. So I will come here periodically and give you updates and get you involved. Excellent. Okay. Excellent. Thank you, Paul. Um, keep us posted. Do you have a date for the next meeting? Not yet. Okay. That's it. That's it. Okay. So um, we've got a bunch of art music. A hundred plus. A bunch of. Um, it doesn't start when your family got here, you know. Presentations. All right. You can argue about that later. Oh. Victoria, <laughs> I will give the floor to you. Really? First, yes. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> Thank you, Monica. This is the Andior School District here to present their budget. Thank you. Thank you. Good day for the students to come. It's a great day for the students. Most of them will be going if you want the first time. Can you get the? Oh, you got one. Yeah. Okay. Good. So I have to start out by saying thank you once again for being so gracious. Our pleasure. Uh, and allowing us to take up some of your time. Thank you for making the effort of the year to come out and visit us. Absolutely no problem. Um, this year I am joined by um, my assistant superintendent for business, Monica LeClaire, who is an Ontario graduate. And the Woodstock Elementary School graduate. And the Woodstock Elementary School graduate. Yay. Yay. And my children are also with yes. Woodstock Elementary School graduate. And Ontario School graduate. Well, Congratulations. That's your next week. Okay. We're hoping we'll have to You're hoping? <laughs> Um, so, if you we can just go ahead and jump in, sure. uh, you can see that our budget, our proposed budget, is going up by uh, 1.28 million or 2.36%. Um, 
Um, you will also see that we are asking the voters to support uh, an additional proposition so that we can purchase two vehicles. And much like every other year that we have come forward, we are using some appropriated fund balance to offset the tax levy. Uh, we tend to cover around uh, 2.5 million. And then much like prior years, uh, we are using some fund balance to um, do some capital work. And with the sort of reinvigoration of our football program, uh, and we now have a new athletic director who's really focused on school spirit and community building. So we want to uh, kind of refresh <coughs> our press box and bleachers, which anyone who's been there knows they are uh, very, very aged. Um, we have some concerns about their safety. Uh, they are not handicapped accessible. So we have any number of reasons why we want to do that, uh, and that. Funding is also included in our budget. So can I ask a question on this page? Yeah, sure. Okay. So with the increase of one point two eight million and the appropriated fund balance uh, to reduce tax levy of two point five three, does that mean that the taxpayers will see less than the one point two eight million because you got this tax levy or we'll, we'll get to the, the levy, but no. How that works. Okay. <laughs> this is just the expenditure side yeah. of the budget, not the levy side. Uh, okay. But we'll get there. Okay. Um, in terms of what's changing to the budget, we wanted to share with everyone uh, as we're going around that you know we are mindful of our ever-increasing costs, so where we can, we will look to reduce staff. Obviously, the um, least impactful way to do that is through attrition, so when we have retirements, we will analyze um, what positions we have vacant, whether we can do things in other ways without replacing every position, and that was the case this year. So while we have more than uh, two teachers and one teaching assistant retiring this year, we were able to um, keep our programs whole and not replace these three positions. <laughs> oh. um, well, thankfully, and not thankfully, but as luck would have it, I guess, I'm not sure, we are losing one uh, classroom section so that's a, that's a very easy way to reduce. But yep. isn't that a matter of reducing the education available? No. So here's the, the idea. As our enrollment decline is working its way through, uh -huh. we will be graduating or moving on three sections out of Woodstock Elementary, and only two concurrent <coughs> sections are coming up. So uh, the... Uh, uh, attendance will be uh, marching in step with the retirements. Correct. So we're trying that to. Lucky. Well, but we're trying to look at each thing, each retirement as they happen. Um, as long as it's something simple like that, we can do that. Sometimes it's not simple, depending on what position the person happens to be in. Can I ask you on the uh, full time equivalency for the teaching assistant? Uh, but is that also a matter of reduction in number of students? Um, we have a number of could... teaching assistants that are assigned sometimes to be one-on-one -on -one with a student. Right, so if their good. needs change, then we can look to reallocate or reduce. Okay. So you don't have a personnel. you don't have a need for that one position so. elsewhere. Okay. Yeah. The other thing is often, especially with the TAs who do a lot of the extra help for the special ed kids. A lot of those IEPs haven't been done yet. This is a projection. All right. Okay. So there can always be changes. Okay. And if I may add too, all of this still keeps us within our class size guidelines. Mm -hmm. So we're not we're not doing this and cramming more kids in the classroom. Right. So on the next page, you can see that um, the levy. Our current year levy is uh, 41,338,000, and our proposed levy is 42,571,000, which is an increase of, again, kind of equivalent to our expense budget increase of 1.2 million. But because the levy is a smaller number, it's a larger percentage, so it's 2.98 percent. And I will let Ms. Leclerc talk to you about the tax cap yes. calculation. So, much like the town, the school is also needs to function with the tax cap. Um, this year is the first year in quite a few years that CPI is above 2%. Mm -hmm. um, in, so with adi in addition to that and um, capital exemptions, our tax cap actually came in at 3.63%. Um, so again, recognizing 3.63 is a large number. You know, 
try to do what we can to fit the, expend, you know, the, the expenditures in within a revenue budget of a 2.9% increase. So um, on the next page, uh, page five, kind of one gives, you know, like I said, we've been doing this for all the towns, where the district has been historically with tax levy increases. Um, as you can see, since the, tax, since the inception of the tax cap, we've always been able to keep it under two. Um, understanding that pretty much every one of those years CPI was, well, in some years, you know, zero yeah. or, you know, negative, but they gave a zero. Um, and in addition, um, we had decreasing retirement costs the last few years. Unfortunately, that has now stopped. <laughs> retirement costs are going up again, and CPI is going up, which, of course, means the you know, consumer price index, for those of you who don't know what CPI is. And with the increase of CPI also comes increasing costs, utilities, um, you know, general construction, and then we have to explain to you guys the increase in costs. <coughs> Forgive me, but I do not understand the changes in numbers. So uh, right here, it says the, uh, the current levy is 41.3. And uh, then it says the proposed levy for next year, uh, this year and next year, is 42.5. Right, so this is going And then from over here we have different numbers. This is going, this is a historical through this year. So that's the current year. So this is going the last five years, what's happened. Okay, got it, thank um, you. And so if you look, so, so since 2013-14, so what, you're, what, what the district is collecting today in the levy is actually about 2.5% higher than what we collected in 13-14. Mm -hmm. So um, as you can see, we had you know, quite a few years that were below one open or nothing. Or nothing. Um, so, what I'm try so if you look at the next slide, the, what I'm trying to um, explain is, is that even though the levy might be going up by 2.98 percent it doesn't necessarily mean the tax rate is going up by that. So, if you, so this is kind of the same historical look. So this is a historical look at just Woodstock. Understand that we have five towns within the Ontario Central School District: Jamaican, Olive, um, Lexington, Hurley, and Woodstock. Um, Woodstock is the number two taxpayer for the district. Um, Olive is number one. In terms of town. In terms of um, assessment, overall assessment. So if you look at the overall assessment, um, for 1718, it's one billion dollars. Is what is, is the is the value of the property that pays taxes on Tour. Mm -hmm. um, you will notice that the assessment change went up almost two percent. That's because the equalization rate this year for the first time fell below 100 percent. I don't know if you guys received any phone calls. I received a few. Um, kind of explain to the taxpayers what that meant. Because again, last year we said the tax levy was going up 1.8, um, but if you look, the tax rate only went up by 1.5. And in prior years, even though if the, you know, when, the, when the tax levy was zero, the tax rate was actually lower. So if you look, since 2013, 14 through now, you're actually only paying three cents more per thousand dollars of assessment. Than you were in 13, 14, and understand it's because as as things grow, and, and if you look at the assessment changes, have always you know kind of almost always been one or higher than one percent. You're getting more homes, so that's actually spreading out the tax you know the, the taxes among a larger base. So again, while I'm saying that the, the tax levy is, is going to look to be going up 2.98 percent, historically assessments have gone up, which means that the actual effect on the tax bill will be less than 2.98. The problem is, is that we won't know the actual assessments until July, which is why we don't set the levy until then. So again, while I say that we're looking at a levy of a 2.98, we don't set the levy through the budget process. The budget process is truly, this is what we are allowed to set, the maximum that a district can spend, and then how the revenues are garnered, that's decided in the summer. So, um, I think that was kind of something that all the town were, you know, really interested in. I mean, understanding like Shandaken, they're at a 25% equalization rate. Um, I think Hurley is also looking to be slightly under 100 next year as well if they don't. And this is when you start thinking, do we need to do a rebound? And Olive is... Um, uh, Olive is maybe. having an issue right now with... This, Orps. With yeah. Orps. Orps is not agreeing with... 
Yes. And that's, and that's, a, and that's a, to, the a total reverse of, the of years past, right. though. Yeah. And that's the problem. Again, you guys have no control over what homes are assessed at. Neither do we. You know, so you know, we say, you know, I mean, mm -hmm. so you know, we, we so what are the, their their rate is like uh, 94, 92? Well, they were one hundred for this year. All of? Yes. Oh, okay. I thought they... It's, it's, it's so last it's, year they were 100. Yeah. It's now, this, this year, current, year. Right. Okay. It's this current year that they're, because it's, we were 99 this year. Yeah, yeah. we were 99 this yeah. year. And it's interesting that a lot of people call, they, they recognize that 1%. Oh, yeah. 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 So. And my assessors come to talk to me. Yes, we, we've started to talk about the <laughs> <laughs> So, so yeah. So if you have any information, you can just, you know, let me know so that, you know, we, we feel, I, we probably don't feel ne nearly as many calls as you guys do mm -hmm. in town, but we do feel quite a few calls during yeah. tax season as well. But, well, well so, so if we're assessed at 99% and other towns assessed at 94, doesn't that mean that they are then not being charged they're the percentage of the amount of tax they should be because their value, their, their property is under assessed. under assessed. So they're going to wind up getting their percentage based on the. That's correct. This, yes. so, so, so do you do you equalize when you set? We don't. They can't. The ORPS does. The ORPS does. That's the equalization rate does. Yes. Okay, so, so they. By you so guys being 99 and say Hurley being 100, it's saying okay, the Hurley homes are assessed properly. You guys are a one percent under assessed, so you're assessment actually goes up and collects slightly more taxes. But you Hurley. said that they're 94%. No, no, they're at 100. They're 100. 100. But another town was at 94%. Oh, 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 okay. So, so that's all equalized. Yes. And, then the, and then the education then the tax gets set. Yes. And then, yeah. So okay. understanding that okay. we don't collect any more taxes. Right. You know, and that's what, you know, everyone's like, well, my taxes went up, you know, X percentage, you guys got more money than you said. You know, we get the same amount. <laughs> Unfortunately, it's the homeowners that some pay a little bit more, some will pay a little bit less, and... And that's it's how they cut the pie out. How they cut the pie, and none of us have control over that. Right. We have no control over that pie. So part, part of that discussion when we were at uh, Town of Hurley is that there were residents sitting there. That some of them are in the Ontario district, and some of them are in the Kingston district. And Kingston is paying twenty-two thousand. Yeah. Right. right. And Woodstock is King, their problem. Kingston yeah. is, is Woodstock's highest district. Yes. Yeah. And Actually, I'm not sure. Sorghum well, is my like, 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 thing. Yeah. I think Sorghum is higher. Yeah. yeah. It so, was Kingston for a while, but yeah. I think Sylvia's passed them. So that's another hard thing for residents to understand. I know when they're looking at homes in Woodstock, sometimes the real estate agent will tell them the town's Europe, and it's not. <laughs> <laughs> we get those phone calls too, unfortunately. But my real estate agent exactly. said so. <laughs> <laughs> so if anyone, needs, if anyone really needs to know, I always say call the school, because yeah. we really are the ultimate authority in the <coughs> district. Um, so uh, slide seven is a breakdown of uh, kind of the, the high of our expenditures. Where where is our money spent? And as you can tell, more than eighty percent of it is instruction and employee benefits. It's labor and it's health insurance and it's retirement costs. It's, it's what school does. You know, we we're very people heavy. We teach kids, and and uh, I'd like to think does, we do a good job at it. Does. Um the operations and maintenance include uh, the maintenance for transportation? No, the transportation is separate. That's so that's repairs for buses is, is in the transportation. Operation and maintenance is your, um, you know, the building itself, the heating, the plumbing, the, you know, um, cleaning of the buildings, Got Got that sort of thing. So. Two separate. Yes, yeah. yeah, plowing would be in there. So yeah. um, transportation is a little higher than operation and maintenance. We're a big district, you know, we're over 200 square miles. We have buses on the road for a long time. <coughs> over 208, 208. I came from a district that was 35 square miles. <coughs> yeah. um, so, and then the next slide is kind of a similar um, uh, idea. Um, it's, it's basically the three parts that a district that makes up the district budget program, needs the largest piece, that's our instructional piece. The administrative piece are kind of those costs associated with <coughs> running the district, um, you know, the managerial costs, the legal costs, the insurance costs, um, that sort of thing. And then capital is, again, um, any sort of uh, project work that we do, um, that sort of thing, building work. 
So, so I guess I have a quick question. I'm sorry, on other page. If you're buying books and things, is that under general support? Where are books? And <laughs> the books would be under instruction. Anything that has to do with teaching kids is under instruction. But it, but the, but the uh, your the uh, teacher's salaries is under instruction as well. Correct. Mm -hmm. yep. So that's a, a okay. Yes. Yeah. Yep. General support is again our, like our insurance, legal. Uh, okay. Um, we have we yeah. do with BOCES. We have to pay yeah. BOCES administrative fee. That's in there. <coughs> okay. Thanks. So as Ms. McLaren said, part of the budget includes $730, it's called the transfer to capital. Thousand. <laughs> 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 really zero to zero after a while. Yeah. Press umbrella. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, there we go. Five uh, one round. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll be working with the architects once the budget passes, and, and this is part of it. We'll be working with the architects to design a new structure. Um, Again, um, you know, we have to go through SED. The SED timeline is um, quite long at this time, so we're hoping that by the summer of 2019, by the summer of 2019, we can start this work and have it for football season in the fall of 2019. So. And this is also based on an architect's projection. Yeah. <coughs> so hopefully the costs don't start rising. <laughs> I know it's hard. It is. And that's, yeah. You, know, you wait a year to do a project and you don't know where the cost is going to go. I feel you're paying more. <laughs> so again, um, on the ballot, you will see Proposition 1 will be the expenditure budget of the $55,577,578. Uh, Proposition 2 will be for the purchase of two buses. So in the past, we had um, put the buses actually in the in, within the expenditure budget. We pulled it out for two reasons. One, um, it gives us more flexibility as far as when we get state aid on transportation on buying buses, it's, it's given out to us over five years. This lets us borrow money and pay it over five years, so it kind of matches the expenditure with the revenue. Um, and it gives us one more year before we have to pay it. And at this point, across fingers, interest rates are still pretty low for marketing. So, um, in addition to that, there are uh, two open board seats that are for three-year terms, starting July 1, 2018. And we currently have three people on the ballot. And hopefully, you all have your uh, got your newsletters in the mail. And, um, one of our incumbents is Trustee Kernan. And so, a question we often get is. What happens if I don't know and the budget fails? First, I try really hard to convince you not to go down. Um, but if if the budget does go down, the district has three choices. Um, they can either submit the same budget out for a second vote, they can change the budget for a second vote, or they can go straight to a contingency budget. If the board decides to go for a second vote, it's the same day throughout New York State for any school that goes for a second vote, that's June 19. Uh, if it fails a second time, or if the district decides after the first failure to go straight to a contingency, um, the rules are based. The, the rules currently say that the district cannot raise taxes in the new year that it raised in the prior year. So we would be limited to raising taxes in 1819, what we raised in 1718, which means we would have to find another 1.2 million dollars in reductions. <coughs> Um, in addition to that, there's some other rules that would apply. We would be able to buy equipment. We have about seventy-seven thousand dollars of equipment in the budget. Um, there's an uh, administrative component cap, and, and I think the, the big one really is that because we've been within the tax cap, everyone has received the uh, property tax rebate, um, and we wouldn't uh, taxpayers would not be eligible for that if we were under, under contingency rules. Mm. Uh, as far as the timeline, so April third, the board of ed is adopting the budget. May 1st, we have a hearing at the Woodstock Elementary School. The vote is next Tuesday, and it will be at the three elementary schools in Woodstock, Bennett, and Venetia. And also, if for those early residents, West Early residents, it will be at the West Early Firehouse. And again, as I mentioned, if the uh, budget fails, we'll have the rebuild on June 19th. And voting is 2 to 9. 2 to 9, <coughs> 2 to 9 p.m. Um, half day for the elementary kids. They always love that. Yes. Um, <laughs> and their parents usually make them come back and vote with them. <laughs> civic duty. Well, that's important. Good lessons. Good lessons. So last page is my information. So if anyone has any additional questions or comments or feels like you want to make a trip to Montour, my door is always open. And, uh, any comments, questions, questions? Yeah. Board? Public? Very good. Okay. Uh, then this, I don't know if you have this off the top of your head because you're doing budgets and you got to project outwards. Uh, it doesn't particularly affect this budget right now. But 
looking out three to five years for Woodstock, do you have any sense of numbers coming through? We've been, aver we've been averaging roughly 80 <coughs> students coming in district-wide. Mm -hmm. um, it's so it's about 40. It, I'm not sure coming in. For, uh, for each of the two. As you put this budget, what are you looking at for Woodstock next year? you have an idea? For the buddy. Uh, Woodstock? For, no, for Woodstock total enrollment, I think it's about 180 kids. Oh, well, what's the Compared answer? to this year would be? Uh, this year it's about 190, I think. I'm just trying to get a sense of <coughs> where the demographics are yeah. going. Yeah. We are starting to level off. We're figuring roughly 80 per grade, so we figure Woodstock's K-3. Do you see an upswing? We don't. We don't. have no upswing projected, unfortunately, in our enrollment studies. And, you know, every year we we have an enrollment study done, and it does project out um, based on live birth rates. So the really accurate data is within five years. Yeah. And beyond that, it's really just trend data. Mm -hmm. Understanding it's not a you know onto your issue; it's a standalone issue. Yeah, it affects everybody. You know, young people yeah. just unfortunately, mm. you know, it's hard to find jobs here in, in New York. And pay taxes and survive. How are we supposed to survive? Oh, That's it. Right. <laughs> <laughs> have enough left to live. Is this information on mine? Um, I just wanted yes. to tell her that uh, Brady's still going. Oh, I'm so glad. I, I have. I have to lift him in and out of the car, but he's still game. He's still. <laughs> and you should, everyone should have their budget newsletter, which also includes, okay. uh, if not word for word, it has the essence of what's in here. Any, but it's also on your website. It is also on your website, yes. Any questions from the public? Can I see the students made it through the presentation? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I asked, they, nobody seems, did uh, you have another question? I have a question that doesn't relate to the budget. Okay. I'm very interested in the present state of affairs with uh, the brouhaha, let's say, between uh, students of various feelings in terms of the clothing that they wear. And I had hoped, I don't know where that situation is right now, but I had hoped that at least once a month all students would be invited to wear to school, whatever. And on that day there would be responsibly held discussions because wearing of the clothing and any symbols is freedom of expression but at least as important as the freedom of expression is the ability the requirement to discuss how does this make you feel what do you think about it? Why are you <coughs> wearing it? Why am I wearing it? What, you know, it should be an essential part of education, rather than saying no or let the uh, leaves fly if they may. And so I'm interested in finding out, if possible, what's happening with that situation now. So we pretty much um, deal with a lot of that type of situation on a case-by-case -case basis. Um, there have been a lot of discussions in classrooms and with students um, about, and you know, actually I've, I personally was lucky enough to be invited to speak with a group of students who had some questions about, you know, what can we wear and why and why can't we wear some of the things that we want to and, and I don't often get the opportunity to sit with students and have those kinds of discussions so it was really good for me and it was really gratifying for me to sit uh, with some middle schoolers and talk about that and and have those one-on-one -on -one discussions of why would you want to wear something that 
offended me or um, caused great upset to me, you know, what what is the what is the importance of wearing something like that? Mm -hmm. um, and I, those kinds of discussions happen throughout the school, um, but there are some things that are not allowed based on our code of conduct. So we don't we don't have a you know a day every so often where you can just wear what you want. Mm -hmm. So I would I believe that uh, group discussions would be superior to one-on-one. -on -one. Well, when I say one-on-one, -on -one, for me it was one-on-one. -on -one. I think there were about eight or ten kids in the room, but... Uh-huh. But can that sort of thing, which I believe is essential, can that sort of thing be scheduled on a regular basis? I don't like that blouse you're wearing. It reminds me of... Ugh, and uh, it's a delivered affront to everything I stand for, uh, you know, I'm exaggerating. Well, I think it, Perhaps. It, it also depends on, it depends on the intent as well. So those discussions um, do happen and are often the, very interesting. The intent? The intent. We actually, um, with our eighth grade, the entire eighth grade, um, throughout the course of a day, went through um, classes where we had uh, a teacher and our new director of PE, health, athletics, and dean of students, one of our newer administrators, yeah. went through a whole day of doing individual class workshops and discussions on microaggressions. Mm -hmm. And, you know, how that plays out and, and how impactful it can be. And things don't need to be really overt and... Um, broadly, loudly offensive. Mm -hmm. So I think we we understand what you're saying, mm -hmm. and we're we are putting some of those things in place. Good. So I imagine that some sort of effort in this direction will be maintained. Oh, absolutely. Good. Sorry. Yes. There's also the district wide committee that's working on the possibility of parts of the code of conduct. We, well, we code of conduct has a dress code built into it, and there's a separate policy of dress code. So there is a the, the committee actually, all of the building level teams reviewed the code of conduct and then sent their feedback up to the district wide committee, and we met um, yesterday. Uh, and, uh -huh. and it will be at the board uh, next week for a review. The board is supposed to be doing its code of conduct on CD. And it hasn't always happened, so we're trying to be stickers for it. Good. So thank you for all that. You're welcome. Reggie? I just want to say I'm really glad to hear about the training that you did. Uh, that's really important. I was a part of a train a similar training recently and uh, you know, all the subjects are important, sports, all the things are great, but teaching children at an early age how to be human and how to express themselves. That is just the core of everything. We also have a, um, a district-wide group that we put together called the Diversity Cadre. Mm -hmm. And we're looking at a lot of um, kind of current event issues. And you know, one of the things that we're working with is teaching tolerance. And so we actually have um, <coughs> a couple of teachers from our primary buildings who got together and have kind of put together lesson plans for teaching tolerance at the primary level and we're hoping that we're going to be rolling that out in the higher grade level successively. Mm -hmm. But we agree, to, you know, we, we have to teach kids how to be kind to one another and you can have differences of opinion and in the current environment outside mm -hmm. of school, um, you know, kids hear things and they repeat them and sure. they can be really hurtful and they need to learn that that is hurtful and that's not how we treat each other at school. And we can't we can't always control everything else, but if we can make that impression in school. And we talk about the uh, teaching tolerance that's being implemented at the K through threes Woodstock and Phoenicia. I believe that's the curriculum that comes from the Southern Poverty Law Center. Is yes. that right? Yeah. yeah. yeah I the fought the Germans in the I fought the Germans in the war and if somebody would have come to class wearing a swastika. Uh, 
in spite of my revulsion about it, I would want to know, what does this mean to you? Mm -hmm. And what does it mean to me? I think that's the essence of it. So thank you again. Victoria, Monica, Lori, Rob, thank you very much for coming out and explaining this. And Victoria, I should just um, thank you publicly here too. Uh, I can't even remember how long ago it was, six, eight months ago, you contacted um, each of the supervisors and we've been meeting every two to three months um, looking for ways that maybe we could work together to, to save taxpayers. We haven't hit on a lot yet but I think they're very productive, or not productive, but very positive meetings. And I, you know, I do look forward to them. So I really thank you for well, thank reaching you for out and initi initiating mm -hmm. that. And even if we just get together and recognize that we're all in this together, mm -hmm. I think it goes a long way. So thank you for that. You're so welcome. So I will just uh, remind folks, next Tuesday from two to nine at um, the Woodstock Elementary School uh, for Woodstockers, come out and vote. Um, thank you. If you have any questions, you can contact the, the school district. Thank you for having me. Thank you. Thank you. Take care. Thank you. I can't believe a year's gone by already. Right? Here we are. Right here we are again. You can still. Next, we have um, Matthew Merchant here from the DEC to talk about bears. Can you, Lauren, can you just tip that TV out so that more the monitor can see it? Am I in your way? Yeah. I think you're fine there, Jay. You might not be able to see the screen, though. I don't, do you want to move? Oh, 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 I didn't realize. Yeah, I just have a couple of illustrations here. Ta-da. Okay, good evening, and uh, thank you, uh, Supervisor Jim, for coming to you for having me uh, uh, tonight, and thank you, for your time. Um, I don't have handouts. This is kind of a uh, preliminary um, talk, uh, kind of a feeler. Uh, give you some background of what's going on with bears. Unfortunately, I don't can't give you a talk of the fun aspects of bears and the informational things about biology and things like that. I've got to talk about the, the, the less popular parts, the uh, uh, less desirable, the conflicts and things like that that people have with bears. But I, uh, give you a, uh, I don't have a lot of handouts, but I have um, a card so that I'd like you guys to stay in touch with me and i uh, also like to, to get uh, uh, support from the public as well here. It, it, it says merchant. What are you selling? Yeah, it's, uh, I'm selling some uh, bear problem prevention techniques. So, Matthew, I will also put this up on the website and okay, our great. Facebook page. Okay. And so folks can contact you if they have questions? Yes. Is a good, yes. Okay. Yep. That would be very good. Thank you. Cool. Okay. Um, where do I get started? TV uh, went off? Yeah, it's not. There I go. Mr. Sunshine. Yeah. <laughs> it's like golfing with Eeyore. <laughs> you got to get a remote. Okay, uh, I'll introduce myself as well. I'm uh, say Matt Merchant. I've uh, been a Region 3 bear biologist for 16 years now, since uh, 2002. Um, I worked also with bears when I was in school in Maine uh, for three years. Um, there we go. Uh, thank you. Um, one of the reasons I'm here talking about um, bear conflicts um, and something that I'd like to, to bring to the town and the town board um, is something for a uh, later discussion and hopefully discussion. Uh, we'd like to work cooperatively um, with you folks um, to help to us to coexist with bears. There's a, uh, a lot in this country of uh, intolerance for all kinds of wildlife, but um, especially uh, bears that are highlighted, especially in uh, areas where there's uh, quite high populations. And there's limited methods to, to dealing with this. Um, I've been to um, some multi-state uh, conferences. We had the 
the Northeast um, Blackberry Technical Committee and the Southeast Blackberry Cal Technical Committee get together um, in 2017. And one of the things they pointed out in their summaries of um, surveying all the different states was that 15, 20 years ago, all of the highest priorities were protecting the bears and raising populations. And now, when they surveyed all the states and compiled their results, at, um, everybody is it's pretty much um, conflicts with humans is, is top of the list for priorities state, statewide. And the majority of states are trying to stabilize or uh, reduce the, the population at this point. Uh, here we have a couple of um, just some data to, to show you why I'm here. And Woodstock was targeted, as was uh, Shandaken. I'm hoping to be able to share this uh, talk with uh, folks in Shandaken as well. Uh, since you're neighboring towns, a lot of the um, issues that have come up with bears um, have um, um, come um, jointly with um, Woodstock and um, Shandaken. Matt, could you just, so I see that's region three we're talking about, this, this chart. Could yeah. you just tell us what counties make up region three? Yes, region three is, uh, consists of seven counties, and uh, we have uh, three on the east side of the Hudson there, um, Westchester, Dutchess, and uh, Putnam, and then we have um, Sullivan, Ulster, Rockland, and Orange over on uh, the west side of the, the river. Thank you. As you can see here on the, on the left, we have uh, uh, <clears throat> com complaints for all those seven regions combined, um, or all seven counties combined over the years. The graph on the left with the erratic um, movements there um, shows a great um, variety, um, um, variance between year to year. A lot of that is due to natural food sources mm -hmm. and also to uh, synchronize birth um, of, of bears. In Maine, uh, bear birth was pretty much synchronized with beech nut crops, which was every other year. Here we have more, um, as well as beech, we have a lot of acorns and things like that, which aren't as consistent in, in the, um, how often they produce fruit. So um, it's the uh, <coughs> synchronized um, birth rate um, here in, in uh, the southern area isn't as strong as it was up in Maine. But you do have a great deal of uh, variation from year to year. Bears seem to, the majority of bears seem to prefer their natural foods when it's, when it's available. Drought and low food, nut abundance or big uh, berry crop failures will um, cause more bears to be, um, <coughs> go ahead and conflict with, with people there. Uh, to kind of smooth out the line, on the right is our five-year moving average of those same complaints. And you can see uh, since 2008, the five-year moving average has kind of, kind of went, has gone down um, over time. And I'll have an explanation for that exactly. And it's, uh, again, as you can see, kind of climbing back up um, since 2012 there. Matt, can I just ask you one question sure. on that, that graph before? That's... It, so when you were saying the birth rate is up and down, is it due to the bears dying, the baby cubs, or is it due to them not mating? It's um, uh, they only, because they only give birth every other year. Oh, that's so. that's a bear cycle is every other year, no matter yeah. what the food source is. Right. Yes. Okay. Yeah. There's, um, so, and there has been documentation of the mortality, um, especially the yearlings and low food years. They don't make it some of them don't make it through the winter. Uh, <coughs> most of that is because of every other year birth or birth cycles. Okay, um, class three, this is one of the things that's con concerning. Um, as you can remember from the last graph there with the five year moving average, it's kind of a uh, drop and a step staying or stabilizing of complaints over the last uh, five years or so, five or six years. However, uh, our class one and two um, problems, conflicts, um, have been kind of increasing. And those are the most severe complaints and uh, conflicts with people. Those are home break-ins, livestock kills, 
aggressive bears and bears that are lacking the fear, fear of people and can't, they're not frightened off um, and things like that. I think that's um, some of that is from um, readily available attractants and from bears uh, utilizing those attractants uh, generation after generation. Um, and um, <clears throat> probably uh, it's being built right into their nature to depend more on human food sources. And again, on the right is the five-year moving average, kind of smooth out the line. As I said, the same thing, uh, you have the erratic uh, graph on the left uh, based on um, the changes in seasonality and, and conflicts from year to year due to um, alternate food uh, sources and things like that. Okay, this, this is, uh, like I said, including Shandaken on the left here is uh, the, just the, the town of Woods, Woodstock. Uh, the total number of complaints uh, from 2013 to 2017, um, and you can see it's, in 2016 we had a spike. Um, we had a spike in home break-ins and, and just nuisance complaints uh, region-wide. But um, this is uh, 10 to 30 or 40 uh, complaints a year out of uh, three to 400 complaints for the seven counties is what we have here in Woodstock. Chandakin um, is similar. It's usually, it's just a little bit higher. It's probably a bigger area and uh, a different dynamic <coughs> as far as towns um, and vill villages and hamlets within that, <coughs> within that area. Um, this is just uh, the percentage of, um, of, of the total complaints for the entire seven counties there. Um, and the orange gray lines, the higher line, lines, show the percentage of those more severe uh, categories of conflicts, the class ones and class two. And you can see there that uh, the uh, Woodstock and Shandaken have, you know, pretty, oh, from around 5% a year, with the exception of that spike in 2016, um, about five to, to seven or ten percent of the complaints for the seven counties are in Shandaken and um, in um, <clears throat> Woodstock, uh, putting together probably about a quarter of the complaints, quarter to a third or more. But uh, looking at the the, uh, you can see the percentage is much higher for those more severe complaints, the break-ins and, and things like that. We have up in in uh, Shandaken and, and in Woodstock both. And together, those are going from a quarter or a third um, of the, of the break-ins and more severe complaints uh, to almost a half, about 40 or 45 percent of total com, um, severe complaints for the entire seven counties. Okay, I'm going back up to the here. Um, <clears throat> this is just yesterday uh, when our technicians came up to Woodstock to take some pictures of some of the, some of the issues, and, and this is one of the things. The primary thing for, for bears um, is attractants, and, and that's the primary key to helping to, or to eliminating conflicts. Nothing else that you do besides killing them um, stops issues with bears um, other than removing attractants. And like I say, um, technician came up and it didn't take her long at all to see um, to find um, overflowing trash up here um, and trash spread out um, you know, all over the floor. She um, all over the ground there. This was the first residential street she she turned on. She said, <laughs> <laughs> "I do recognize it." <laughs> <laughs> okay, she went to uh, a lot of the businesses too, uh, business dumpsters. Um, and the larger housing complex dumpsters, those types of things uh, usually cause a lot of issues in it and uh, attractive issues as well. <coughs> usually these plastic lids are easily caved in by bears and you can see well, a lot of times they, they have the latching bars and things on them. Uh, metal ones also have latching bars, a lot of them. Uh, but if they're not latched, uh, bears can get it, them open and into them. Uh, she didn't find any overflowing dumpsters or anything that probably things have been picked up over the, the weekend because we know that you know that is an issue in some places. 
So, um, as I said, we're dealing with the, the issues. Uh, you see, um, our, one of our priorities is uh, the, um, meeting human uh, needs, the public's needs, um, as well as maintaining healthy bear populations. We wrote our um, black bear management plan, our updated it five years ago, it's on our website. When we did that, we got a lot of uh, public opinion um, as far as you know, what, what things did were important to people, both positive and negative, as far as bears. And that's how we manage bears right now. It's more, we don't shoot for a population number. We um, listen to what the public has to say and uh, try to address positive uh, impacts and negative impacts and try to strike a balance between those two. Our primary tool uh, dealing with bears um, is through hunting um, because lowering the population, um, you know, will of course lower the number of complaints. However, um, and, it, and it's our, our primary tool, it's the easiest thing. Humans are the only uh, the primary source of mortality in, from bears. Um, one of the issues with, with uh, doing that is it doesn't necessarily affect the bears that are uh, having conflicts with people. Um, you can drive, you know, open a, a wild um, hunting season drive population numbers way down. That will drive your number of uh, issues down of conflicts. Um, but you have to get the, the population very, very low um, in order to do that. And that's not necessarily what we want to do. It's not necessarily what the public wants to do. Um, not um, drive the, the population down to such low numbers because people do like seeing bears. Um, they do like having them around and, and have respect for, for them. Um, so, so hunting isn't the only answer. Also, uh, but we are trying to lower in this area the, the population a little bit. Um, we did expand our hunting season in length and, and in a number of areas where we did hunt over the last few years. Uh, we haven't really seen any um, sign of uh, the population dropping yet um, at this point, not in our area, um, where, the, where the number of conflicts is either. Okay. Um, so, let's see, what I'd like to, what I'm here for uh, primarily is to, I'd like to, for the bear's sake or for people's sake, um, like to work with folks. Um, a lot of states um, are now getting communities involved, working with communities, and trying to find community programs that help to reduce conflicts with bears um, without lethal methods, just help, trying to help um, reduce the number of conflicts and raise the people's awareness and tolerance for bears. Um, and um, this website here, um, I'd like, you know, um, whoever from the public uh, the town board to take a look at it. It's a very helpful uh, website. It has a lot of very good information on it. Um, it's um, called bearwise.org. And this is what a lot of the states are using and promoting now for um, to try to get people to, um, to coexist with, with bears. Um, part of that, um, and part of the interest we have here, I printed off our, they do have, um, or several of the states that are doing these things um, have no hunting season at all. So there are a lot of their complaints and conflicts um, and even injuries from bears have, are, uh, have been really skyrocketing. So they're really um, at quite a battle there. But I have, um, or this website has links on it um, to, um, well, it, it, it talks about, um, one, of, one of the sections of it talks about communities and what communities can do, what they can look for, how to assess what they have, and, and some of the different ideas of different things that they might do to, uh, to become bear-wise and be bear smart. And one of the things is, like I say, many states are doing these things. Um, now, we don't have any at all in New York, and I'd like to get started with, um, here in uh, Woodstock, the town of Woodstock, and Chandlake, and I'd like to work with, with you guys 
what I'd like, what I came here for was to propose that, uh, well, for the public for support for Ron and also for the board possibly to uh, just discuss the issues and the different possibilities of um, becoming the first very smart community and our uh, very wise community and, and also uh, maybe choose a person or, or, um, or have a committee or work together all together. Um, and I'd be glad to come back um, and we can discuss the different types of things that could be done and uh, different financing possibilities and, and all those kinds of things. Uh, this is something I've been meaning to do for years, but uh, finally get around to it here. From this website, I printed off um, what they have for um, sample ordinances from several different um, towns, and I'll just leave that for okay, folks. Thank you. Um, you're welcome. Um, Tennessee, from the uh, board has done a lot. Uh, Tennessee, um, Colorado has done in several, several different towns. There's different things. A lot of the, the issues to deal with, um, uh, education, I was going to mention education. Um, some of you might remember Meredith Buller. She did a, a study here to evaluate uh, fair education. Um, she studied Woodstock and, um, and, another, and three other towns and did a uh, comparison. And what her uh, conclusions of her study, and, and what she did was try to saturate the communities with um, educational, uh, all different types of educational media and things and, and then kind of evaluate it before and after to see what kind of behavior changes there, there were um, and things. So what she found was, uh, sim what has been found uh, similarly in other uh, states that education just doesn't do it by itself. Um, people don't don't seem to or they, they understand or and they, they get the knowledge but they don't follow through and they're not consistent. Um, there's not we don't see any behavior behavioral <coughs> change. Meredith thought that um, over the, over time uh, eventually you'd get more and more compliance and, and things would change but um, there was no immediate um, over the year or two that she she worked uh, immediate um, evidence of, of behavior change. So um, education is an important component, um, which is important to work with. Another thing is uh, making it practical and easy for people. Uh, bear proof containers um, are kind of hard to get by. They're a little or to to get in this area um, without uh, they don't make them locally. Um, although you know the local waste management companies do provide some uh, type of, especially dumpsters, uh, but not much in the way of residential cans. Um, so finding a way to um, get those into the people's hands so they can use it and so it makes it easy and practical for people to comply um, is another uh, step that um, needs to be worked on. One of the ways that can, uh, other states and other have um, try to work on that is through different cost sharing methods um, with um, helping to pay for the cans or paying for them up front and then getting uh, incorporating a, a, a tax kind of on, on from the homeowners to um, get reimbursed for the cans um, for, for a time until those things were paid for uh, but there's there's several other different methods that have been tried and, and used um, but this is one of the things um, that's been an obstacle statewide or nationwide with these states is that although they've tried a lot of these programs, cost sharing, taxes, fines, things like that, um, they haven't found a real magic bullet yet for, for um, dealing with these things. They're still working on it though. One of the issues with cans is that they have to be um, something that the waste management company can use. And uh, there are some that are available, and it depends on what kind of pickup uh, system they have. Um, but they also found that some of those, even though they worked with a uh, pickup system, the handlers were rough with them, or the equipment was rough with them, and, they, and the, the things would uh, get bent or warped, or, and all of a sudden they wouldn't latch very quickly. So it's, it's got to be, you know, that's something that's got to, another thing that's got to be worked on. 
uh, and the trash waste management companies have been working with the state wildlife departments, and they have been making improvements on their, their receptacles and things and making them so that they're going to work better and hold up. Um, one thing I'll, uh, oh, um, the other key, uh, besides making it practical for people um, and educating them, is um, enforcement and um, um, making it cost people uh, something. Um, without that, that's another thing that's been found to be an obstacle. You've got to have some kind of ordinance, some kind of fines or penalties to not, um, for not complying. Um, and what, that's another thing that the, the towns and, and communities have been doing, making their own ordinances. That's what some of those examples are. Um, and they sometimes using their own people, their own zoning officers, their own police officers to help enforce those things. The DEC has a, a law against direct feeding of bears and we have a, a law against indirect feeding of bears where um, if a bear is getting in your dumpster, uh, we come give you a warning letter um, and you don't uh, clean up the dumpster and make it bear proof, when we come back you can get a ticket. But that's really not practical for us um, to try to follow up with and hit all the different residences with their individual cans and all the different dumpsters and then to follow up with a, um, with a ticket later on um, and then and follow and see that through. It's, it's just not a um, practical or effective method for um, dealing with the issue but, from our yeah. end. Okay. Can I just ask you one other question? Has yeah. um, the DEC thought about um, working with the garbage haulers as far as a specific time to allow garbage to be set out? Um, the day that that picture was taken, uh, that you had up there, my husband actually met with the garbage people down at the end of our driveway. And of course, garbage was all over up and down the street. And um, he said to him, is there any way that um, we would know for sure that you would be coming between 5 and 6 a.m.? And he said, no, it depends upon the flow of traffic. Now, this is Empire, great company. But they're coming out of Allenville, and they're coming up very early in the morning. But if they set a time limit, and this is just my thought, okay, they're not going to pick up before 7 o'clock in the morning, then people have a time frame when they can get their garbage out. What's happening, we hear garbage cans, garbage pick up at 4 o'clock in the morning. Somebody's not going to get up at 3 to take their garbage out. So if they did it at an hour where it's you know, feasible for them, then they're not putting it out at night when the bears are actually roaming and coming down and, and getting into the garbage cans. Right. Yeah, um, that is one of the one of the ways that I would um, see that we would be working with communities is to by also working with waste management companies for things like that. And they some of those examples have time limits of when receptacles can be out and available okay. um, and things like that, like time frames. And I noticed that there was one there that said that if you don't have it inside or and you have it out too long, somebody has to be within 15 feet of it at all times. <laughs> oh, <my God. laughs> so uh, I know for a lot of people that live in the city, if like the trash is on what is Wednesday on my street. So if you live in the city, you have to leave your I mean you kinda have to leave your trash out or is there like any other way that they can throw it out by just sort of leaving it for the week? Yeah, um, taking it to the dump is usually an option, um, or making uh, arrangements with um, someone else. So um, I would say the dump would be the best one, but um, otherwise, if they had uh, somebody or friends with a neighbor, or, um, neighbors where they might make an agreement to store it, or they could make a building. Um, a lot of places make little sheds um, out near the road where they could put the some receptacles in there and make arrangements with a waste management company to get it out of there. Maybe um, those would be some ideas. We've had good success with diesel fuel. Oh, oh, yeah. Paint the get paint the cans. They won't they won't go near it. That's interesting. Yeah. So you, 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 you're saying the DEC officers <laughs> can come out and issue a, a warning if somebody has a, a can and a bear gets into it. The DEC can the, the forest rangers do it too, or just the DEC? Yeah. Um, Either. Any any department staff. So they'd issue a warning, and then if 
this were problematic, they'd come back and just give them a ticket at some point. Yeah. Okay. Yep, they could do it for bird feeders, anything that, that is attracting bears. So. so if the town has one or two individuals who just, because I think last year it was pretty good. Most people really worked to make sure it didn't happen. But there were just one or two individuals in town. So we could avail ourselves of help from the DEC on that. Mm -hmm. yeah, okay. so yeah. Yeah. There's a I'll really big one day. floating around my house, but mm. oh, just by chance, my uh, <coughs> granddaughter said to me last night, did you know that cats will chase away bears? Mm. And I said, no, no, get out of here. Mm. So she called out her telephone with movies on it, and one after another, a house cat was make a lunge at a bear and the bear would take off, big ones. There was even one bear that was trying to make off with a large plastic bag of garbage, and the cat would go after it. And the bear finally was able to swipe at the thing and run off, and the cat was chasing it. Mm -hmm. Each time, the cat, the house cat, was chasing these monsters. And without fail, without hesitation, every single time a cat went after a bear, the bear turned tail and was gone. <coughs> Yeah, yeah, they're, they're, they're I think we have a, a question. Well, I don't see why the, the waste company is not, you know, required to provide those um, bad weather locks on the, the, uh, the garbage. I called up about getting one, but they didn't have any. Mm -hmm. They didn't supply them, but I believe they should supply them, and it should be part of their, the cost of doing business there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, meeting with them and getting them to, to do that, it's, it's got to get done. And um, so far, they haven't been easy to work with. Um, you know, they, yeah. The town could pass an ordinance that's saying that they right. need to provide it. And then another uh, new pulse is going. They've been having some bigger issues over the last few years. And they um, were looking for ideas, too. And I've been talking with them about doing these things. <coughs> And they, one of the things they're doing is going to a sole source provider for their um, pet trash pickup, or I guess that's one of the things they proposed. So they're trying to make it easier to work with it. That's excellent idea. Yeah. Um, since it's more sole source. Unfortunately, those costs will all come down to the person that's getting right. the garbage. So it's you, well. now you might have garbage for $50 a month, and it'll be 120 a month to provide the cans. And the bear's not going to pay for it. And the no. bear's not going to pay for it. <laughs> You're right. Yeah, the, um, some, uh, well, the, I think a lot of places have found that the cost isn't really that significant. I mean, especially added a uh, little lot of at a time, five or ten bucks or something uh, a month or whatever it is they ever pick up, and the things are usually paid off for pretty quickly that way. Well, I think you should at least provide mm -hmm. the locks, you know, at, at cost, if that, you know, is the case. Then, mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, and I think that there should be some uh, funding sources or different ways to add to whatever cost sharing there might be, or uh, cost in, in providing these uh, that can be looked into. Um, I haven't checked out all the different avenues yet, but I know there's, I'm sure that there's some different methods. They probably don't want to have to fun. unlock them all either right. every time they stop. Right. I mean, you see them go up and down the street, right? They're, yeah. They're so booking. A lot of them are the automated, work with the automated systems. Mm -hmm. yep. Nobody even gets out of the truck, it just comes right. up to it. Yep. Well, we will. Uh, I'll have this uh, this information uh, available for the board, and we'll digest it and talk about it, and awesome. I'll be in touch. Great. Yeah, I appreciate Are there any? Hearing back from you, yes. Okay. Any other questions from the board? Good job. Good. Matthew, thank you very much for coming up today, Doc. Thank you. I appreciate that. So we'll give you a minute, and Ken, as soon as he's done disconnecting there, we have one last presentation. Good evening.
be. Mm -hmm. Hello. Last year, the uh, PSC established new rules for what they call uh, community generation. And this was meant to give people who uh, were unable to acquire solar on their homes, either because uh, you know the roof wasn't aligned correctly, or they had shade trees, or uh, they lived in an apartment. Uh, so this was an, an ability for, uh, for homeowners and small businesses uh, to purchase renewable power from a a, a community generation and uh, and uh, obtain the benefits of uh, solar power without actually having to uh, put something on your roof. Well, at the uh, beginning of the year, uh, a group, Natural Power, uh, which owns some hydroelectric plants, said they were going to begin offering uh, renewable energy uh, to consumers and to uh, uh, anyone who wanted to buy it. And so uh, I started looking at this, not only for myself, but for some friends. And I looked into some of the town accounts that, that, would, uh, that might qualify for this. Now, the town has like 20 different Central Hudson accounts. Some of them are, are seven are demand accounts, which are the high usage accounts. We have, we have three municipal uh, lighting districts. Uh, we have two residential accounts, and the rest of them are, are small commercial. But of those accounts, the two residential accounts and the, one of the small commercial ones uh, would qualify as a, as a, as a residential small uh, commercial use of uh, uh, subscriber to uh, community solar. So I asked uh, natural, uh, natural, uh, the Natural Energy Group to provide us with some contracts. We had uh, three proposals. I went through them and ran the, uh, the, the data that we, the, you know, the, the prices against last year's expenditures, and it, you know, we can use renewable power for these three installations uh, for a little bit less than what we're paying now. So it looked like we could save up to ten percent, which isn't a whole lot of money, but uh, we could get some advantage from that. Uh, so I'd like to introduce uh, Sarah uh, Bauer, who's from the Natural Power Group, and have her explain what her situation is, what the the facilities are, and. Uh, Answer any questions that you might have. Welcome to the Hi. I used to live here back in the times. I love this place. Um, I'm Sarah Bauer Turbush. My husband and I own and operate three hydroelectric power plants in the Hudson Valley. Um, imagine us last year, we were 30 years into our power plants and we had to renegotiate our contracts with Central Hudson. So we walk into a meeting ready to renegotiate a contract and they said, oh no, New York Public Service Commission has completely redone this. Here's the 300-page decision. You have to go by these rules now. So suddenly I became a power marketer as well as an electrical engineer and operations expert. So uh, we looked at everything, talked a lot with Central Hudson, talked with everybody, and we can now offer our power to customers at savings. We know what our expenses are. It's just my husband and I. Um, we have a couple part-time employees here and there when we need them. and. That's what we're doing. It's based on the New York Public Service Commission rules, which are very intricate. Um, so what we're doing in our contract is saying you will get credit on your bill based on what the New York Public Service Commission says, and then we will rebill for 10% less, so we guarantee a savings. It seemed to be the fairest, best way that we could figure out to do this to work around with their rules. And <coughs> talking to Ken here, as he said, there are three accounts that qualify um, for us at this particular time. We did have well, demand in available, but the town of Rosendale grabbed it from us. Uh, one, the one woman there grabbed all the capacity for that. Right, so, yeah, Jen, Jen Jennifer, Jen Metzger. So that's where we stand right now. And uh, we can also take residential. Uh, we have about 10% of our power left for our Wall Hill site, which is the only one that's worked through everything. Um, our larger plant, which does 12 million kilowatt hours a year, uh, comes available in December. And we'll, what we'll do is, when that comes available, we'll approach anyone if we have <coughs> demand um, capacity available and let them sign up for that at that point. So, with all that, Questions, please. <laughs> yeah, I've got, I've, yes. got, I've got a question. Okay, so if we were to sign up, mm -hmm. uh, would, we, would, we, would we be guaranteeing a certain kilowatt usage over a year or a month or whatever? We can't. Would we look at what the um, count used 
over the last two years right. and match it to a percentage of our production. We have 30 years of production that says, mm -hmm. on average, right. we produce around 2 million kilowatt hours a year mm -hmm. at the Wall Kill site. So the average home uses around 10,000 kilowatt hours. That's kind of, that's what they're using mm -hmm. as an average. So that's 0.5% of our production. So what we say is every month you get credit for 0.5% of our production based on the New York Public Service Commission rules. So you'll see a credit on your bill and the following month we rebuild that for 10% less. Yeah, okay, so 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 we're so 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 we so we're getting billed only for what we use. We're not guaranteeing we're going to use a certain amount. We're only billed for what we use. Central Hudson bills us. No, so it was, you, you get a Central Hudson bill, but on it's going to be a credit. Okay, and then you, you bill us ten percent of the credit. Yes, but it isn't based on what you're using. It's based on what we produce. It's a different concept. Well, well so how do we know that what you produce matches what we used? You, we look at it over the course of a year. We've, we looked at the last two years of what mm -hmm. you used mm -hmm. and try to match it to our average. At the end of a year, if you're not using anywhere near what we allocated, we have the choice of either backing it off or stopping the credits for a couple of months until it catches up. Mm -hmm. If you end up using more, if we have the available capacity, we will give you more. Okay, but but if we use up your capacity, we still get energy because we get it from Central Hudson. Right. It just wouldn't get. It, it wouldn't get. Uh, reimbursed by you. It would be right. a different... Exactly, because okay. in the summer we're hydroelectric, in the summer it dries up a little bit. We're most productive in the spring and the fall, and we hope it's consistent over the winter. Yeah. Okay. And so we only pay for what... For, for, for the credit, you, right. get, you will get credit on the bill. Right. There is no upfront costs. Um, I know that previous power marketers have kind of given a lot of people a bad taste, mm -hmm. and I can't blame them, because and this is kind of payback to me because I used to just discredit them. Everyone had to buy power from the New York ISO, it used to be. Uh, New York Independent System Operation. Central Hudson, everybody. So there really wasn't, until now, a way to save. And this started, program started last uh, March, and it was developed primarily for the solar fields that they want to develop. Um, our advantage is we've been producing for 30 years. We know what our expenses are. We know what we can produce. Um, your neighbor. Okay, what are the three accounts again? They are the, uh, the youth center, the supervisor's cottage, and the Rock City Road restrooms. Mm -hmm. and, and do you know, Ken, what, I don't remember what we pay for them in a, in a year, for example. You, you wouldn't happen to know offhand. I what, sent you all that. Uh, I, 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 it's, not, it's not coming to Right. Yeah, all right. those accounts with the with the credits and the discounts and you know, right. we save a you know a couple of bucks a month and uh, if you go back and look Ken did send it. No, I know, I know we said it easy, right. I mean it's only five percent of our total electricity usage, so it's not big numbers. Yeah, right. It's it's you know, it'd be comparable when you, if you signed yeah. up as a homeowner. But it's still a guaranteed 10% savings on all right. three of those. Um, right. Yeah. Right. 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 And, and, and based on what you said before, too, about how somebody's using your, your energy, but then they're going to stop, and then you'll have some more available. So would you have available for these three uh, use, for, for our three accounts today, or we would have to wait till some more comes available from other? No, you, you have, um, he, he grabbed it quickly when I talked to the first meeting I went to was the <coughs> control meeting. And he got right on top of that. So yeah. that's allocated right now. Um, mm -hmm. If you needed more, I'll have to see at the end. Yeah. Okay. Uh, okay. Well, do we need a resolution? But because because Bill had mentioned because can you talk to Bill and Bill had talked to me. Uh, I. Uh, I'm very happy about the idea. I, I see it, it's a savings. It's not a huge risk because it's a small percentage <coughs> of what we have. The town likes to be renewable, so I, I'm, I'm very I'm very happy with the idea. Um, I don't know whether anybody else has any reservations about it or what we take to, to sign up officially as a board. I have no reservations, but I've not seen a contract, so... So the contracts will be over. I, I, I'm not going to do the resolution tonight, um, but at least I think by the end of the meeting you should have some sense of, of a direction. Um, so the contracts yeah, I, are, I like it. are over there, and uh, we have a meeting next month, next, next week, Tuesday. 
Um, so Richard, you're comfortable with it. I'm comfortable with it, Laura. Yeah, and once we so read the contract. Oh, I'm sorry. Once we read the contract. I'm, I have you're, com you're comfortable with the concept. So the concept. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. yes. So we're going to get clean power for 19 cent less. For for three buildings, yes. That's a tough one. Yeah. <laughs> can, can, can I ask you what makes those three spots eligible for this? And, um, so the supervisor's cottage, why not the maintenance garage in this building? What separates us out? Well, the maintenance garage is tied into this building. This building is a, a demand. It's the meter. Uh, demand demand. Account. Okay. Okay. Demand account right now. Yeah. okay. Uh, but the supervisor's cottage is a residential, has a residential meter on it. Okay. However, and the same thing at the youth center. The same thing at the youth center. Okay. At the end of the year, the other uh, dam comes due, and there'll be demand okay. energy yeah, available. Demand available. Okay. Someone else is. Mm -hmm. well, so we'll have to jump on it because there's other people looking. Yeah. Well, that's a good deal. If um, <laughs> yeah, it, we have a group of three other municipalities that are doing what's community, called community choice aggregation and they want to offer power from our large plant as part of that. Mm -hmm. And um, so if that does not happen, and they haven't signed anything yet, I will go back to those that signed up first with me for mm -hmm. the regular stuff okay. to offer it. Um, yeah. The I, contracts I, are, there's, there's, there are only three pages. Is it one for each building? Yes. Yes, there's, uh, for each account we have one. Yeah, I, I have another question for you whenever it's sure. time for the question. Um, I told my lawyer to make it as simple as possible. I said I want a one-page contract. I got a one-page contract with two pages of additional terms and conditions. <laughs> <laughs> that was the best the lawyer could do. I mean, she was twitchy at that. <laughs> you so I'll look at the get Okay. Well, I was saying it's two, two questions. One, one, one question is, so, of course, the contract's right there. I could read it, but I don't want to take no, time no, out of it. But so, so we're signed up for a year of this, and then we would re-up, and the yeah. terms and conditions could be different in a year? The contract is for five years, but what we're saying to people is we're asking you to stick with us for a year through the highs and lows of our production, mm -hmm. your con what you're going to consume to take a look at what happens at the end of the year. You can get out of it. And so there it's is a no five-year contract with a one-year bailout. Yeah, yeah, you, and even with one year, if you guys come to me and say, this just isn't working, writing that extra check that you're adding on for a month is not, it's costing us more than we're saving, which I think the savings are going to be around $500 a year if I did it off the top that, of that. That yeah. That's about pretty good. Yeah. yeah, but more um, renewable, too. Yeah, it's renewable in the area, too. But, so, you know, we live in the area, we don't want to have bad feelings about anyone, yeah. so if anyone wants to bail for any reason. Mm -hmm. So, so the terms for the five years would be just what you're saying, that you get the credit for Central Hudson, we pay 10% less than that to pay you. So, so that's the five year and, and the, yeah, the one year bailout, is right. what you're saying. Okay. We, I wrote it for five years because I can, when we were originally doing this, we thought we were only going to get residential. And at residential, we were looking at several hundred people. Mm -hmm. And to re-up everybody at the same time in a year was going to be a big deal. A, a big deal. A nightmare. Um, it ended up, I was very surprised that municipalities jumped on it because, yeah. you know, several people in municipalities have helped develop this program so they understood. Mm -hmm. Explaining this to the average residential person is, is challenging. Oh my yeah. God, well, you don't know how many times they've talked about it. Yeah. yeah. That's it. So, so, uh, so, yeah, and so my other question is if people, if, resi if people, residents is in Woodstock wanted to do this, mm -hmm. who would, who uh, would they I go with? Card and a flyer and don't they give them the card them until you sign the contract. Which is around 20 people and in, for individuals. Right. If you, you have someone who's very um, energy conscious, it could be as little as 0.3%. Mm -hmm. um, for example, I think the restrooms are only going to take 0.3% of our production. Right. Yeah. So that kind of tells people. <coughs> Thanks, okay. Thank you. Thank and you. Jay, I didn't, it, you're liking this idea, I'm assuming? I'm sorry. You, you like this concept? Oh, yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. And the environmental commission has been working with several of the solar vendors oh. to handle the, uh, you know, the demand accounts and some of the other. Right. But these, you know, sort of took, took these out because they, well, because I was looking at my own right. situation, several friends, and this matched up. Okay. And I really couldn't represent the town for total electric use. Right. Yeah. Well, I'd like to thank Ken. Yeah. I'd like to thank Ken for you know making sure we got this information. Done a great job and spent a lot of time with this, so I do appreciate that, Ken. But um, Rosendale and uh, Marlboro, like Sarah said, have been on 
top of this for the right. last two years, right. this whole program. So when they saw this come along, they, they jumped. Knew it, they knew it was good. Okay. <laughs> yeah, well, and thanks to Sarah as well. But yeah, but Ken, you brought us the news, so. Yeah, it was great. Well, I expect that there'll be a resolution on the, the table next week. Is Ken writing that resolution? Yeah. No, I'll, I'll write it. I'll run it by him. <laughs> I'm trying to save you some work. <laughs> you guys got to read your emails. <laughs> Ken, thank you. Carl, thank you very much for yeah. coming up. And I'll leave this. Uh, this is for anyone who's interested in it. Here, I'll take it. Talk to so if you haven't seen it, Ken did send out the email with, with the breakdown that really explains it very uh, succinctly. And um, the contracts, all three contracts are over in the office. So uh, if by next Tuesday you could all take a, get a chance to take a look at them, oh, I would you. like to try and move forward on this. Back to the agenda. Did we cover this all? I have one other, um, just an <coughs> announcement. Um, the Ulster County Office of the Aging approached me uh, a number of weeks ago to talk about um, lunches for seniors. And they were proposing if we could find a location to set them up coming up on Tuesday and Thursday, which would supplement uh, some of the other programs being offered in town, uh, and prepare a hot meal for our seniors. <coughs> we looked at the community center, and that's, it's a little rough with the schedule we've got in there. We, we'd have to really rearrange what the seniors are doing there now. Also, there's issue with, um, with summer camp uh, there, where it would be tough to, to mingle the two. Um, so I did some brainstorming and I reached out to the fire district, to Company One, which is a uh, taxpayer-owned building. And the commissioners have not voted yet on it, but they seemed very agreeable to the idea of um, allowing Gateway Industries through the county to uh, provide meals out there. So we're looking at that. One of the Two, two of the concerns the commissioners had was, you know, they don't have staff to do cleanup. Now, Gateway is supposed to come in and do everything, but if you guys are willing, I would be happy to assure the fire department, should there be some issue that our maintenance could go up and tidy up if need be. Yeah. Uh, the other concern they had was about insurance, and, I, uh, you know, I would be comfortable if you guys are comfortable with providing them as an additional insured. So, um, any thoughts on that? Well, yeah. So this is not the uh, Woodstock Senior Rec Committee, because they're having uh, their annual A luncheon. Lunch. They're having one annual luncheon. Right. Yeah. This would be lunches every um, Tuesday and Thursday, uh, year round. So <coughs> people and would they be free? Yes. People uh -huh. go there and eat the lunch? Good people would get there, go there and eat the lunch. So it's, it's, How does this connect it's, with Meals on Wheels? Yeah, that was my next question. So Ulster oh, County, Meals on Wheels is delivered. Ulster oh, County no, through Gateway. And competition? I mean, what yeah, are you I don't doing know. here? Don't well, know. Meals on Wheels is really for folks who can't get out. Well, sometimes. Yeah. So, so this is handled by, you said, so this is sponsored by Ulster County. If we don't want it, that's the No, no, I'm just trying to figure yeah. out what's going on here. Right, and I just want to understand too. Yeah. So this is, you said, it's Ulster County Office of the Aging through Gateway, that's who sponsors. No, it's Ulster County it is sponsored. Gateway Industries are the ones that will be doing the work, providing the meals. Uh, okay, but Ulster, Ulster County is... Office of the Aging. Office of the Aging. Is, is the umbrella for this. Right, right. And, and then they are subcontracting to Gateway so to speak, yes. to do the work. So, um, and, and so Ulster County Office of the Aging is providing the funding and the food and, yep. and, and, and Gateway is providing the people and the cleanup. And so which firehouse? This would be the Company One, one, company one. up on the Bearsville Flats, which is the only um, district-owned building. Do, uh -huh. they, do they do lunch now, Gateway or Ulster County? Not in Woodstock, but I, I believe they are running a program in Sorgates, and I believe they've either started one or are going to start one up in Shandaken. I think Olive has one. So that Is this for people that don't, I mean, 
Could I go there? I'm certainly How old a senior. Are you? Are you I'm aging? certainly a senior. <laughs> I, 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 I believe, Jackie, that they have a fairly liberal uh, age limit. Right. I think just Reggie and I would probably not be. Whoa, whoa, I know. Whoa, whoa, I, think whoa, you're whoa, right. whoa. I know I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure about me. Right, Bill's on the fence, but I know I could be on the fence. Jackie before. won't have any trouble gaining admittance. We have the same birthday. We do. Yes. We do, and we're yes. the same. Oh, do you? We're the same, same birthday. birthday. So what, I'm sure. One of the things. <laughs> what, one of the things that you know, if we did want to consider this, they would come up and actually prepare a meal just like they're going to do it for us, for the fire commissioners, for anybody who wanted to participate, to come up and just, you know, walk us through it and how it would operate. It would be a two hour every other day uh, from 11 to 1, which includes prep and then clean up. Just as a taxpayer thought that if Gateway's coming in here, why would we supply them any kind of tidiness or cleanup afterwards? We should. We, 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 we should. The yeah. they, now they shouldn't. Well, they, they're supposed to, is what Bill's saying. I, know. I, mean, so then, I mean, is there some way of saying, listen, if you guys leave it like this, you're not going to be able to do it here? or? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. And okay. if, it, if that becomes... I'm just giving an assurance yeah. to the fire commissioners. Oh, to the fire com Okay. Yes, and I'm giving an assurance to the the fire commissioners uh, oh, okay. for the insurance. I thought you were telling Gateway no, no, that no, they no, don't no, have no, to clean. No, 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 no. Oh, I can't okay. imagine. I, the, my understanding is we do nothing. They come in. They do everything. Um, it is insured through the county, but you know, if if they need, if the fire district, the fire district has nothing to do with this really. Right. This is us. And they're it. not concerned about the wear and tear twice a... I mean, that could draw a considerable size group of people once they start to hear that there's free food. It, it may. It might be not very good food. Oh, sometimes <laughs> people don't care. My understanding is that it, it, it's pretty good, but, uh, you know, I haven't... Yeah. Yeah. Again, so I also it, say that, I mean, a number of seniors, I mean, people don't talk about it, but a lot of people, you know, on limited incomes especially, would probably really appreciate a program mm -hmm. like that. So mm -hmm. I think, and it may be people that we know, or maybe people that we don't know, that may not feel comfortable going to, you know, a food pantry. I just think it's a great opportunity. And I think Gateway Industries, you know, has their folks come in, they do a good job. Yes. They're, they're professionals. Forever. So yeah, so they're not coming in to trash the firehouse. No. I don't think it's gonna be 200 people in the parking lot no. and there's some traffic thing. I think it's a feeding program that's for hungry people, especially mm -hmm. seniors. And I think it should be, you know, we should get behind that. But I also think but, it goes beyond that too. It, you know, even folks who may not necessarily have a financial problem, but just want to get out. And be social. Yeah, that's and be social. Too. Yep. Which that's for, for, for seniors is, uh, I think, very important. What will it be kosher? Mm. I'll ask. <laughs> I'll ask. So, 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 Bill, the other question, and I'm all for it as well. I think it's a great idea, and I think it's great. But, but I do agree with Jackie. I, I do, I do think that there will be some wear and tear to the firehouse. They're going to use more electricity. They're going to use. I don't know if they get a water bill or whether they don't get a water bill. But when you have a kitchen going, there, there are going to be some costs. Mm -hmm. and, and the firehouse, I'm not sure, you know, whether they're paying an electric bill and, and all that stuff. Yeah, so, so, yeah, but so I. But the fire district. We yeah, the fire district. Yeah. So, so I, th so I think that it's a great program. Yeah. Although one question might be, will we have a, you know, you know, the 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 one year ba ba bailout we just said for the other one. Do, do we have? If it's not working, can there's we no, stop at any no time? So, so we can stop at any time. If don't it, come if, next week, guys. And, and, yeah, and I, and we, when we. Yeah, I, I hope it wouldn't come to that because I hope yeah, it works don't out come well. Next week. Then they'll be lined up, and Judy has to deal yes. with it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just here. I mean, so just what you just said this another time, Bill. It's two meals. It's it, two, it would, it would Tuesday, be Tuesday Thursday. and Thursday, because there's already um, the soup kitchen does Monday, Wednesday, and right. Friday. Right. So this would supplement. Oh, this is filling the gap. This is filling in Tuesdays and Thursdays. Nobody's serving a meal. Right. Meals so, on wheels does. Me, meals on wheels does, but right. But uh, there's no. They, they deliver. Right. I would be. I, I'm all for it. I think it's great. I, I just out of respect, I would contact Meals on Wheels and, and let them know it's coming in. It might come in, just to make sure there's no conflict mm -hmm. or anything. Well, in the like food pantry as well. 
Well, and food pantry as well. It's just Meals on Wheels does a great so, service to this community. Absolutely. They've done it for years. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I just think communication with them would be helpful. I'm just curious, how might it take away from Meals on Wheels? Meals on Wheels are people that just, can't get out of their homes. Not necessarily. And, it's, the only, it's the one service that's offered. In general, well, that's true, actually. Mm -hmm. That is true. It's not just. It's kind of a better. respect thing. It's just to say, hey. Right, but it's for, I mean, it's programs that are feeding each other. So it's not really people. You know, it's free food. No one's disrespecting it, by trying to feed. It, it's, but a I too, I totally understand. It's, it's a courtesy. I understand. It, I it, it shouldn't. Guess. It shouldn't be an issue, but it would be yeah. a courtesy. Yeah. Because you know, they say, well, it's a problem. I'm well, not they may have to adjust what they're doing. Maybe it's too. Piss people off. It's a lot of people. What? I don't get surprised anymore. Yeah. Right. Say it. What's that? I said you'd be surprised what pisses yeah, people off in this town. Yeah. <laughs> Iris? There you go. So they wouldn't be paying any kind of fee towards the utility usage? No. It would all be free no. and then it's added to... Well, the ta you know, I mean, the taxpayer picks yes. that up. Okay. Yeah, so. but, but like Reggie says, I'm... But, but that would be the same as if they were using the community center. The taxpayer would be picking that up. So, so who would be telling Meals on Wheels? I'll talk to them. Yeah. Well, because the other group I think you might want to talk to is Family at Woodstock, because they, they, they're involved in so many programs around town, I think that they should know what's going on. Too. They'll be sending people down there. Well, so they'll already know. Well, I'll, I'll talk to them. Just make sure they know. So, so they I'll talk to them. them. If it gets set up, no, yeah. I, they, they don't need to. Yeah, but, but they want to know it as a resource, because, yeah, yeah they will want to send people. Okay. Mm -hmm. So I'll, I'll let the fire commissioners know that, that um, Yes. We're, we're in agreement and, and they can take it to their board and just, you know, they, they haven't they voted on it yet, but, yeah. but it, it got a positive reception there as well. So. Cool. Okay. So let me see here. One other thing that I'll just briefly mention, because we've had lots of topics today, but there's um, another energy issue called Community Choice Aggregation, um, and there's some information in the purple folder. So I would ask you just all to take a look at that. That's basically where the town would create a local law um, that would bring an energy company in to sell energy to folks. Uh, and so you could get a, you know, you'd negotiate and they'd give each town a deal. I know that uh, Kingston is looking into it and, and seriously considering it. So everybody says so. Um, that's just a very broad brush stroke there on it. But just over the next couple of weeks, if you could start to read up on that, I would appreciate it. And maybe in a month or so, we can have a conversation about uh, our thoughts on that. And with that, I will go to some resolutions. Whereas mental health is essential to the well-being and the vitality of our families, businesses, and communities, and whereas mental health conditions are real and prevalent in our nation, with one out of four Americans and one out of five children affected by mental illness, and whereas more people die from suicide in the United States than from traffic accidents, and an estimated 22 veterans die from suicide each day, and whereas... Stigma and fear of discrimination keep many who would benefit from mental health services from seeking help. And whereas with effective treatment, those individuals with mental health conditions can recover and lead full productive lives. And whereas education, compassion, and awareness about mental illness can change negative attitude and behaviors toward people with mental illness. And whereas each business, school, government agency, law enforcement agency, health care provider, organization, and citizen share the responsibility to promote mental wellness and support prevention efforts. Therefore, be it resolved to proclaim the month of May 2018 as Mental Health Awareness Month. Second. All in favor. Could I Aye. make uh, two suggestions, please? Yes. Uh, I would suggest that we don't use the phrase mental health. And let me finish. Um, it wasn't that good. phrase has invariably led to the kind of stigma and fear uh, that we all are familiar with, at least have heard about. I would uh, suggest emotional health rather than that. There is such a thing 
as mental health, and that's in really in the realm of psychiatrists. Emotional health is in the realm of social workers, uh, psychotherapists, and you know a different level and a different uh, thing. And the other word that I would add in the very first sentence, essential to the well-being and vitality of our families, businesses, communities, and schools. So well, Jay, this is the resolution that came from the organization that developed mental... This is not my resolution, I didn't write it, and I, I'm, I'm reluctant to... since I it's not you. mine. I hear you. Um, I, I, I'll, I'd be happy to amend the resolution to include schools because I don't think anybody would be offended. Um, but, but as far as Mental Health Awareness Month, okay. I didn't name it. Um, so I understand. Thank you, Jeff. So you'll second my... my uh, second. Put the motion to amend. To add, to add schools. Okay. All in favor of the change? Aye. Aye. Okay. All in favor... Any other questions? Comments? <coughs> All in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, let's see. Whereas there was a pipe which burst on 9 Elwyn Lane and which was repaired, and whereas it was determined by the water superintendent that the water did not enter into the wastewater collection system, but rather into the ground, there be, therefore be it resolved to chain, charge the sewer the average amount charged for the previous four quarters and subtract the remaining sewer charge from the water sewer bill and be it further resolved to charge the full amount for the water which amounted to $596.30 and to reimburse $1310.26 to the property owner of that water sewer account. Second. Okay, so this again, we've done a few of these. Yeah. Um, any questions? All in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, whereas the town of Woodstock has assumed responsibility for the Woodstock Cemetery, and whereas Shea Cox has assumed additional job responsibilities such as locating and marking graves, assisting in digging graves, and assisting in selling graves, among other duties, therefore be it resolved, the town board <coughs> create a grade 2.5 tier laborer. Jackie, please add yep. that word for the custodial department personnel to be compensated at a rate of pay midway between the rate of pay for grade two and grade three tiers, and be it further resolved to appoint Shea Cox to a grade 2.5 laborer at the rate of pay of $18.92 an hour, effective January 1st, 2018. Second. Question? Yes. Uh, where it says, be it resolved, the town board created a grade 2.5 tier for the custodial department personnel, that implies going beyond Shea. Well, we created it for the department. It's created for the department. And, uh, and, and so the, the first part of the resolution is just for the department. The second part, it, we're creating the position in the custodial department. The second part gives Shea the, the further be it resolved to appoint Shea. That clarifies. Question? Okay. Yes. This is retroactive to January 1st? Yes. It's been when doing. did we take over the cemetery? It was the 6th, but he and I were working. Was January? What? It was January? Yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. Okay. If you want a nickel and dime, I mean... No, no, we, I'm, not, we, I'm not trying to... No, no, I know, I know. I'm you're asking not. a question, Supervisor. Yeah, yeah, no, 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 that, that's I'm a allowed to, question. I'm allowed to do you that. are, you I'm allowed are. to do that? No, not to do <laughs> <laughs> um, I think... I we, know you want to rule things, but I can't, you know, some, I can't help myself. Good, it was a good question. It was a good question. I can't help myself. <laughs> Calm down, Richard. <laughs> you're the one who's getting excited. I'm not oh, excited. Uh, your face uh, is I'm excited. This is 8.45. Yeah, I know. Let's go. Let's go. Technically, I think we took it over in mid-January. Um, I'm comfortable. He's been, he and I were working. Excuse so. me, guys. All in, all in favor? 
Yeah. I, I heard the old. I thought that was my personal sign. It was until they misbehave. All in favor? Aye. 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 <coughs> Whereas private entities wish to make contributions to the enhancement of recreational facilities, and whereas yeah. it is requested that these funds not be mingled with other funds to the town, therefore be it resolved to establish the recreation or facilities trust and agency account. And I need to amend this to say uh, T09575. And be it further resolved, no money shall be expended from this account without the express approval of the Woodstock Town Board. Mm -hmm. I'll a second for purpose of discussion. Yes. So, so my question is, are we moving money into it at this point? In time? No, no, no. We, we, the town's not going to put money into it. So this is just like the dog park where people want to make a uh, donation. Okay, so we're, we're just putting a, 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 we are, a... We are creating a bank account. That can be used for this purpose. Yes. Right? And only that purpose. Uh, but the but the recreational committee is is looking to expend some funds to do stuff. Correct. So so that so that won't get confused with this. We, the town does have some recreational accounts that we can spend for facilities. This, but we we can't take donations and put it into that. This will allow them to go out and fundraise. Mm -hmm. And put the money in there, and okay. then so, and then so, so this group that's focused on recreational facilities will they'll have some budget that's funded by the town, but they can go out and fundraise, and that money will go here. Yes, well, they, they don't have a budget have though. Budget. Yeah, they don't have a budget. We we have okay. money. They're going to come. They're working on With a proposal. A proposal mm -hmm. that you know we'll sit down and decide. And actually, then remember that all of that is subject to permissive referendum. So, you know, we, we might decide we, we, we like the idea, we want to spend $10,000 on this, mm -hmm. but it would be subject to the permissive okay. referendum. Okay, so my other question is, as we have a recreational task force committee, I forget what the title is anyway, we have this recreational group, if they go out and fundraise and this money goes into this account, and then we're saying, okay, you guys who took the initiative to fundraise, the money's going to go in the account, but you can't spend it unless we tell you you can. So unlike the dog park, which I don't recall, maybe I'm confused. We approved that too. So every time the dog park yes. wanted to buy some uh, jumps or whatever for the dog park, they fundraised and the town board said... That all okay. goes through. We sign the vouchers every month. Uh, oh, okay. Okay, cool. He, he had town board has control over. Okay. That was my question. When it said approved by the town board, um, we don't have to approve that at a meeting every time. It just we'd approve it just signing the vouchers. We would sign the vouchers. Good yeah. enough. Yeah. Well, so if they came in with a ten thousand dollar project, we just sign the vouchers. I'm not sure you're following. We have to approve. Well, by signing means we're approving the voucher. So it doesn't come from a vote. It comes from. Yeah, it would come through. The, the, well, the vote a, is at the business vote. meeting when we say, y yes, we vote whatever we say. If they come in and they say, we, we, I'm just we, saying, this doesn't come as a single item. Hopefully, they went to It wouldn't, now. but but in years past, there have been cases where we, you know, somebody would raise issue with the voucher and they would say, you know, I, I, I don't want to pay um, Joe Blow for, for we, I, I don't believe we should be doing that. And that voucher gets pulled. But, but, but they would have already spent the money by then, right? Once they submit the voucher, have they already spent the money? They may, may, may not. On big projects would be approved, pre approved. Then, then somebody's going to hold their hand out for yeah. it because the town's not going to give it to them. Yeah. But, but, so they're, they're, it's going to be hopefully they, behooved. They have to, to get, they get, have to get approval. Mm -hmm. So, to, to, they, so, so they're, they're going to know to pre-approve before they spend funds yes. out of even this account? Yes. Because For instance, the dog park, we, you know, we, we have a, a long-standing <laughs> agreement that they, they hire the same gentleman mm -hmm. to do a spring and fall cleanup. Right. That doesn't get pre-approved, yeah. but, but we approve it yeah. at voucher time, you know, when yeah. we do the vouchers. Well, I guess my worry on this is going to be, um, you know, I, I know things like the, the maintenance department or the highway department, and we already know they have a huge budget, and when things come through on those departments, you know, I kind of already know they've got a budget. Something like this is kind of a one-off that I might forget how much money is left in their fund. So I see, I, I'll see this voucher, and I might not remember how much money they have left in their fund. 
I can guarantee that Pam yes, never. Yes, I was just going to say. <laughs> yeah, but if she, so, so we so have she, a safeguard there. Yeah, yeah, but Pam. It's so it's all all the funds are right there. We don't spend the money unless we know we got. It. Uh, okay, so Pam wouldn't even give us the voucher. She didn't think that. Yeah, the you money wouldn't say that. She and I would see call it. Okay. Right. <laughs> I don't would say it. Yeah. 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 I'm still because okay. you're using two things here: pre-approval and approval. So if they want to build a new bathroom, to say up there, they don't have to come to the board. No, that we would all that, 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 that would all get pre-approved, and it's all. Well, what does that mean, pre-approved? They come to the What's board. The, what is the yeah. process? The whole, they, they would present. To, they would right. present to the board. Yeah, that's all. Yeah, yeah. yeah. that's all I was wondering. And, and then once we pre-approve it, when we see the voucher that has it, we should approve it because we've already pre-approved it. It would be it would be odd for us to <laughs> approve it at town meeting like and, and then say no, we're not going to see the voucher after they spent the money. <laughs> they can't do any big projects on town property without town permission. They can't go build buildings. The town has to sign the building permits. And there's the penultimate approval. Yeah. Okay. Well, it's, it's, yeah. Uh, and this just gives them the ability to fundraise. They don't. They can't access the money. Yeah. Only the town. Yeah. Okay. Can. Okay. So we'll see how it goes. Well, the dog park seems to have worked out. I mean, I was heavily involved with that at the beginning, yeah. and, and I think it's overall worked out well. And we have a couple other trusted agency account where money gets collected and then it's to the town board. You know, the, we're talking about major projects here mm -hmm. that they hope to fundraise for. Mm -hmm. So again, it's not like they're going down to buy a couple of jump ropes to leave in the supply shack. Right, right. They're talking about building a basketball court or something like that. So that it's all things that will get pre-approved yeah. by the time. Well, and also the good news of this Long is... Long before you see a voucher. Yeah, but the whole point of this is they're looking to fundraise. It won't be town money, so... Correct. Of course, we are. I would think we should approve it because yeah. they're saying, hey, we want to fundraise so the taxpayers yeah. don't have to pay for this, and we just need a bucket of money to put the money that they go out and right. take the initiative to raise. Right. Into. There's another matter, though, besides the board, we're talking to them about that Larry has, Larry Allen has to also... The join town in. has to approve that. Uh, correct. Yeah, including well, you told me was Larry Allen. Include, including Larry Allen. Okay. Uh, including Larry Allen down at uh, Rick Bowles. Uh, Larry Allen? Is Larry, Larry Allen is head of the water and the sewer water department, guy. and our wells are down at Rick Bowles Field. So a anything done down there needs to keep that in yeah. mind. Um, <coughs> we just need to be sensitive that that's our water supply. And uh, from the beginning, the discussion, because this is going on two years, you know, where some of this stuff has started. And um, so everything has to so get. So, perfume factory a, wouldn't be a good a thing to put. No, it wouldn't be. A rendering yeah. plant. Yeah. <laughs> All in favor? Aye. 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 <laughs> so, you, know, you noted the labor in the one and then the, the uh, number in the other. Uh, well, I think Jackie was, anyway, did you hear that, Jackie? I did not. What was that? <laughs> the, you got the, um, the number for the trust yes. agency account yep. added to the resolution? Yep. And the word labor for the previous resolution. Uh, yep. Be resolved to establish the electric car charging station capital project point zero eight seven, and be it further resolved to appropriate the sum of $25,000 from the town hall roof replacement capital project number point zero. Nine seven. Can I have a second? Seven nine per, second. But it was seven nine seven nine, nine seven. But I seconded. Uh, for purpose of discussion. So, the um, we had put away about a hundred and twenty thousand dollars over a couple of years to replace the town hall roof, mm -hmm. and we got very lucky, and it came in far cheaper than we had anticipated. I believe there's still about forty forty five thousand dollars sitting in that account. Um, we just um, uh, the contracts came in for the electric car charging stations. We've talked about that. We're going to do a double charging station at the uh, Rock City bathroom. We're going to do a double charging station up at the community center, and of course we have to pay for this up front. We will be getting reimbursed 75%. And actually, the $25,000 is, is far higher. The, the price of the units is 15000 installs plus the electrician. So we're looking at probably under 20000 for the whole thing. Um, and we will be getting 75% of that back. Um, and this is how I'm funding it. And at the end of the year, we'll close out that town hall uh, roof repair. <coughs> 
I do want to do one more thing down there. When they put the panels back, there were three panels that were no good, so they didn't put them back up. And I would like to replace them just so that we keep that system at the same capacity as it was. So there'll be a little bit more cost down there, but that won't be significant. So any questions about the charging stations? No, good idea. Well, looking forward to them. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, let's see. Whereas on March 13, 2018, the town board adopted a resolution to expand the amount of $30,000 for the sewer repair reserve type fund for the refurbishment of the Parkson Dynasan filters at the treatment plant. And whereas this resolution is subject, was subject to a permissive referendum pursuant to provisions of Article 7 in New York State Town Law, and whereas the town board has not received a petition calling for a mandatory referendum, and therefore, be it resolved to authorize the water sewer superintendent to expend $30,000 from the sewer repair reserve type fund for the refurbishment of said filters. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 What has become of our reed blood bed? The application, I'm glad you brought that up, Jay. The, the, um, <coughs> so the company, one of the things I think I mentioned last is that we had to come up with a management plan to deal with the reeds because the DEC is terrified that these reeds are going to run away and start to mix with invasive reeds and, and um, so we had to come up with a plan. The, the reed company has been working on that for the last four or five months. It's taken quite a long time because they actually had to get the DNA of the reeds out in Oklahoma. And then they had to, to have it Ancestry. certified, oh. it, it, the DNA. <laughs> and so this all took a long time to do. But the whole package has been submitted to the DEC. It's in their hands now. And we're just waiting for final approval. I'm, I'm optimistic that we'll be constructing it in fall. Do they have DNA in Oklahoma? Okay. They, not only do they have DNA in Oklahoma. Not a lot but, of different DNA. <laughs> but, <laughs> but the reeds have DNA too, so yes, yes. So, God, Laura, I think you said you had some announcement. Uh, oh, something. well, I just want to mention the, the library for a moment, if, if I may. Okay. Okay. I, I was at a library workshop yesterday. The library just, oh, and you, I guess you can see Jack, the back of Jackie's head. Should I, should I move? Yay! Okay, okay, yeah, okay, all right. So uh, the library is having workshops. They had two workshops yesterday. They're going to have three more uh, focus groups. We'll call them three more a week this coming Monday. Because what they're doing is they had they had they brought somebody who's a Woodstocker to join the table to lead the discussion. Somebody with a lot of library <coughs> background and experience to lead a discussion to get different people talking about what the inside of the library should have, what, what capabilities should it have, what kind of rooms they need, classrooms, they need the, the big open uh, space like they have where we have the meetings there today, what, what are the different things, children's area, areas for youth. So they were really asking the focus group people for their opinions of what is needed on the inside of the library. There were two sessions on, again, yesterday. There are going to be three sessions you know, this coming Monday. It's really by invitation, but if people wanted to come sit and listen in, they, they could. And uh, so where they are right now is they had put out a bid. I, I will put the glasses back on to look at the notes. So they had put out a bid to, um, yeah, to, to 43. They wanted to get architects who were local. We all remember the unhappy experience of the annex where they had somebody from who knows where, New York City or whatever, and didn't really understand Woodstock, didn't really. Uh, so they're looking for local architects that understand the region, understand the area. And um, they put out to 42 local architects or regional architects to send in resume or qualifications. They've already received, um, where are my notes, 12. They've gotten 12 responses so far, they may get more. They're gonna pick of those three to offer, to give some architectural diagrams and offer them money for that. So, so far they haven't offered money. They're gonna, they offered, res, yeah, they look for resumes right now. 
And then when they pick the three, they'll be offering money to get some architectural ideas. So, so they are moving along, and they're doing it by trying to listen to the people and having different people in the focus groups. It was a good cross-section yesterday. It was, um, there was a musician, it was me as the town board liaison. Uh, there was a musician, there was um, somebody from, I think, Land Conservancy. Um, there was there somebody who has been a librarian in different places, somebody who, has, who teaches a class right now in Laura. the... Um, could this be something other than encyclopedic? Uh, sorry. Well, I'm just trying to share what's going on. So anyway, so they are, they are moving forward. To make a long story short, they're moving forward. Thanks. But I just wanted to share that they're trying to get a cross-section. They had somebody at the table that wanted to renovate, somebody at the table that wanted new build. And so they're just, I think they're trying to listen expansively and openly. So that's what, what my impression was, and these sessions are still going on. So, so you'll hear more from the library, but that's where, um, that's where they are right now. Thank you, Laura. Reggie, you're good? Great. Richard? <laughs> Wonderful. Never better. He is. Jay? <laughs> what? A any, any comments? Questions? Announcements? We still got that bum in the White House. Uh, <laughs> move to adjourn? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Aye